In this tutorial we will take a texture, prepare it in 3ds Max and take it into Unity for light mapping. My name is Tino van der Kran from Sessville Studio and let's get started. For this tutorial I'm using a texture made during the global game jam that didn't end up getting used. If you want to follow along with the tutorial I will make the texture available. I've started out placing some grid lines that will help me along the way in 3ds Max when I make a box out of this. The tool I use for making grid lines is called NKS5 and is freely available online. Now that the texture is saved we can head into 3ds Max and create a plane. You can snap to vertices or grid points by hitting S. By default, snapping to grid points should not be enabled uh, and you can do so by hitting the right mouse button on the little magnet icon in the top of the screen with a 3 next to it. Hitting M will open a material editor that we will use later. I'm also noticing that the mouse movements are out of sync with the video, um, so please bear with me. If you hit the empty checkbox next to the diffuse name in the material editor you can pick a bitmap to use as a texture. Browse to the texture we exported from Photoshop and apply it to your plane. Drag your material from the material editor onto the plane and don't forget to hit the show shaded material in viewport button that looks like a checkerboard. Now that we have the same texture as we exported from Photoshop, it is time to apply the same amount of grid slices, which amounts to 12. Once you have set the segments to be 12, you can uh, hit right mouse button on the mesh and uh, convert it to an editable poly. Hold down shift and uh, drag with the transform gizmo to make a uh, copy. Hitting A will enable the angle snaps toggle, which allows you to rotate at specific increments. Similarly to the snaps toggle, you can also adjust these increments by hitting the right mouse button on the little magnet icon in the top, which has this angle graphic next to it. With the inner faces enabled, uh, we can extrude the faces downwards to be specifically one segment long from the side texture. We don't need all the help lines and vertices on the texture anymore, so it's time to clean up the mesh a little. With your edge selection tool, you can double click on a line to select the entire circumference of the line. If you then hold control and uh, hit the remove button in the panel on the right, you will remove both the lines as well as the vertices. Next up we weld the uh, remaining vertices to the corner vertices of the mesh. And for this I typically use the target weld tool. You will notice that this creates some stretching on the texture and that's what we're gonna fix now. So in the modifier panel go towards unwrap UV and uh, apply it to your model. Select all your faces and in the projection section of the modifier stack hit the planar mapping button and uh, map according to the Z axis. Once the texture is back in place you can collapse the modifier stack. Now we want to assign a texture to the parts that we extruded earlier and we're going to use the same metal strips that are on the sides of the texture. If we planar map the side of a box uh, with the strips that need to be UV mapped still selected it will map the same texture onto the sides of those strips. And this is where the um, segments come into place, because it's an uh, exact fit. Make sure that both meshes are attached to each other and act as a single mesh uh, before you add the UV unwrap modifier. Now select all the faces on the side, including the strips on the top that we want to have UV mapped as well. Then when we do a planar map along the x-plane, we should map the strips of the side onto the inner strips of the top. Once you are done UVing, you can collapse the modifier stack. You repeat this process for the remaining two strips on the top panel. However, this time around you will planar map along the y-axis. Now that we have a single panel of a box, we can duplicate it six times and uh, rotate it and snap it around to form a complete box. Also don't forget to frequently admire and save your work. 
As mentioned before, we now use the snap and angle snap tools to put the box back together. Once all panels are in place, it's okay to attach all the individual mesh elements. Now to prepare this box for light mapping, we need to create a second UV channel because the box texture takes place on the first UV channel. If we try to light map on the same UV channel, you will get light map information applied to all sides of the box. For light mapping information to be unique for each side of the box, we need to unwrap the UVs so that there will be no UV overlapping and no uh, UV information outside of the 0 to 1 UV space. Sometimes it can be a bit confusing to work with the 3ds Max uh, UV channel, so make sure that you save the UV channel information for both channel 1 and channel 2. The process we will go through now is to planar map each face of a single box panel. Uh, once they are planar mapped, we will stitch them back together and spread them out over the available UV space so that they get uh, unique UV information uh, for a light map. To quickly planar map the box, I use the quick planar map tool assigned to the Ctrl Q hotkey. And while you're assigning hotkeys, uh, I also assign the stitch hotkey to Ctrl W. This will pretty much speed up the otherwise laborious workflow. What I'm doing here is selecting each of the faces and doing a quick planar map. Also notice that this doesn't mess up the original texture but instead applies it to the UV2 channel. Uncheck the normalize map toggle button in the modifier stack to make sure that the texture is the same size with each planar map. Because I hadn't done so before, I will now assign my stitch hotkey to Ctrl W. Make sure that you stitch each panel individually so that it's easier to spread out. Uh, additionally, it will also look a little bit better on the light map because it will not spread out light map information over the hard corners of each box panel. If you press Alt X, you will enable X-ray mode. And this allows you to get those uh, hard to get edges a little bit easier. If you look at the UVWs window on the left, you can see how each of the planes get planar mapped and uh, stitched back together. With the entire box unwrapped in the UV2 channel, it is time to uh, fit it back into the uh, 0 to 1 UV space. And for this, we use the Pack Customs button that you can find in the Edit UVWs window under the Arrange Elements tab. Leave a little bit of space at the edges of your UV map, uh, otherwise uh, textures that are placed alongside it in the Texture Atlas may bleed into, um, into the UV space of other elements. Also make sure to save this UV map. Once all that is done, it is time to save the file and export the model as an FBX so we can use it in Unity. Once in Unity, create a new scene, uh, import your box texture and also import your box mesh. If you want, you can also organize your folder structure. To assign colors to certain surfaces, we need to make some materials, so also make a materials folder. 
With the project sort of structured, we can start uh, creating a scene for this light mapping example. Create three materials and apply three different colors to them. Uh, for this demonstration I've created a blue, red and green color and I will apply those to planes that I will place around side the boxes. Mark everything as static in the inspector panel if you want it to be included into the light bake. Then go to the window drop down and select light mapping. Here we can configure our light map settings such as how many bounces, uh, what the skylight color should be, uh, bounce intensity, but also things like ambient occlusion and how strong it should be. Depending on your computer light mapping can take a pretty long time. If you notice that it creates several light maps for a uh, fairly simple scene, make sure you adjust the resolution in the light mapping tab uh, where it says texels per world unit. From this point on it's just playing around with the light mapping settings, uh, adding removing lights, uh, try to create an interesting scene uh, and see how you can make it look appealing. At this point I noticed that my import settings imported the boxes at a uh, 0.01 scale. Um, so I decided to set this to 1 and rebuild the scene. Uh, don't be afraid to kill your babies as they call it in the industry and just rebuild what you have to try and make it a little bit better. Light maps also take area lights into consideration and this can create some very interesting uh, lighting for your scene. As a result of changing the import scale of the FBX boxes, baking the light maps now takes extremely long. Because the resolution is now set to 50 texels per world unit, it creates 5 1K light maps for this fairly simple scene. If you change this to 0.5 resolution texels per world unit, it will compensate for the scaling from 0.01 to 1 in the import settings. Lowering the texels per world units will also lower the uh, rendering time it takes for the light maps. However, the resolution will also be lower. Baking that light map took about 5 minutes to bake and created 6 1K textures. Um, this is way too much, so lower the settings and let's try again. This video took about 45 minutes to record and is sped up greatly so that it won't waste too much of your time. Somewhere around this point, uh, unfortunately my computer crashed while recording, so um, I lost most of the scene. Fortunately, it did keep the recording uh, that you see now. I still wanted to show you how to do uh, shadows with area lights uh, and some other things. Let me know if these tutorials go too fast if you want to see shorter segments. Perhaps that I dedicate a single video to uh, each of these steps. Uh, please let me know in either the comments or hook me up on Twitter. Please also support us on sassybot.com to, uh, to keep these videos coming. We cannot do it without your support. Thank you for watching and see you around next time.